Hi everyone, Jerry Bellini here. Welcome to my channel. Today it is so beautiful out. It has snowed all night and it we got about eight inches of snow and it's just a beautiful white winter wonderland out there. We do not have any electric, however, <laughs> but I was really lucky enough or fortunate enough uh, that I still had 45 minutes left on my camera battery, so I wanted to finish making this video for you for Friday. Anyway, today's video is going to be a sewing video, and we're going to make these little patches, and I call them scrappy patches. You can call them whatever you want. It's a slow stitching project, and um, I think you'll enjoy it. I have seven different ways to stitch patches together. So, seven different ways to stitch two little pieces of fabric together, and then you stitch those together and those together until you create these big patches. Kind of reminds me of crumb quilting, only we're using our hands, not a sewing machine. So I love to slow stitch. I just love to stitch in general, and I do this in the evening, kind of to wind the day down. It's really very, very relaxing. So once we create our patches, then we are going to uh, create a project. And this video got too long, so we're not going to do it this week. We're going to do it next week, the project. And the project is going to be a little tiny needle book. I just love it. It's so cute. <laughs> Mine is three by three. You can make yours any size you want, but that'll be for next week. So let's see. Did I have anything else to tell you today? No. So I, say, I would say let's get busy and shove on over to the table. I have a lot to tell you this morning and I'm hoping that this video doesn't get too long and that's why I broke it up into two parts because this week we're going to make the cloth, next week we're going to make the project. What you're going to need is little tiny pieces of scraps and I have a ruler here so you can kind of get an idea of how big these pieces are. If you can get a needle and thread in here and you can sew a seam, a halfway decent seam, it doesn't even have to be a full quarter inch seam, it could be a scant quarter inch seam. So this morning we are going to be stitching some of these scraps together to create these pieces of slow stitching cloth. Okay, now you can see some of these pieces are really small and they're wonky and whatever, and I love them. If you have fabric and you want a little bit more of a subdued look, turn it over. Because this piece, you know, it's got these little polka dots on it. When you turn it over, you can still kind of see them, so you still get some nice texture, but you're not getting that bleh in your face. Same thing with something like this. When I buy clothing at the thrift store, I use every single part of the clothing. So here is some of the remnants of the clothing. And I also use this. It's a little vintage rickrack. But here is my bag of remnants from the clothing. So what I do is I bring the stuff home and I launder it right away. I throw it in the washing machine with some soap and then in the dryer and then I cut it apart. And when I cut it apart I save every little bit. So here's an old pocket. I'm not going to use this for this particular project but I just wanted to show you. I would save a pocket. I would save, now that's just a handy little scrap in there. I would save the side seams and I love it when I rip the thing apart and it leaves me with all these beautiful threads and then if you look really closely you'll see there's little holes and that adds to the texture of your project. Here's a drawstring casing I guess it's a drawstring casing and here's the drawstring so I love the way that looks. You cut off a little piece of that and stitch that onto something it's fantastic. Um, there's the drawstring as I said. This is a um, side seam. Love it. Add that to a piece of slow stitching. Uh, let's see. This is a cuff. 
I will use a blouse cuff. This is linen. I will use the button. I'll just cut, maybe I'll cut the piece off and leave the button on. I will definitely use the buttonhole. Um, this, this is my favorite thing, is one of, when I find one of these, um, the casing at the top of the pants. You know, I'll use this, I'll use the button, I'll use these loops, and I'll even go so far as to use the lining if it needles nicely. And I don't think this is 100% cotton, but look at that, it's like butter. So I would use that. I save all the labels as well because they make really interesting fodder on your slow stitch projects. And so I just wanted to show you that. In case you're wondering about the thread, I use embroidery floss and I started using it a few years ago when I found um, Jude Hill online. She uses embroidery floss and the reason she does is because she says it's very soft unlike sewing thread that you use on the sewing machine. And so it keeps your slow stitch projects soft. And so I love it. I use two strands when I'm stitching two patches together. But when I'm doing the invisible base, I use one strand. And I use several different colors in the same project. So I have white, black, brown, gray, and ecru, I think, in here. And that kind of goes really well with my natural theme. As simple as these techniques are, they all do give you a slightly different appearance on the top of your cloth. So hang in there with me and you'll see that the combination of all these different ways of putting the cloth together are going to make your pieces really fun and interesting. So I got a few patches and I like to use the wrong side of the fabric because it just looks more worn but you can decide whatever side you want to use is great and I took all my scraps and just tried to find two pieces that kind of went together. Pairings, I think Jude calls them, pairings. So these are pairings. Now I'm going to grab a needle with two strands of floss and I make sure there's a knot at the end. I'm going to do, just do, for the first one, a very simple running stitch. One or two stitches and then a back stitch. And I'm just going to do that all the way across for this one. At the end, I'm just going to do two little back stitches. I'm not even going to worry about a knot. Simple city. Cut it off. I leave a little tail and put it to the side. This next one is my favorite way to put two pieces of cloth together because you can really see the seam. I love the way it looks. It's very primitive looking. See the little railroad? So you're going to fold over one edge and I finger press it with my fingernail. Fold over the other edge and then you're going to put the two um, right sides together. So you see you have the seam allowance on both sides. You see that? And you're going to go underneath the seam and there's a knot at the end of the thread and I'm going to use black thread for this one so you can you can see what I'm doing and I'm just going to whip whip stitch all the way across I try to get as close to the edge as I can and then I just go back and then that little loop I put my needle through that makes a little knot and then I cut it off 
When you're doing this whip stitch, you want to take a little tiny bite out of the fabric as you go along. Just make sure you take enough so that it, it holds. And then when you turn it over and you open it up, I just love that. Set that aside. The third option and I use little tiny pieces as you can see if I can get a seam allowance in it it's fair game so I am going to fold that over again and fold that one over I folded both of them over and instead of putting them the way I just did the last one with the seams on both sides I'm going to flip one around So there's no seam on that side showing right now, and there's the seam on the other side. And I'm going to stitch that. You can stitch it with whatever color thread you want. I'm going to just use black again. And I'm going to whip stitch it again. And now this one, when you open it, There's those beautiful little railroad stitches, but there's the seam allowance. It's on the right side, and I just love that little extra something something on there. So now when I go back to do my embellishment on my scrappy patches, I will, you know, stitch on that. So that's the third one. The fourth one. Again, I'm going to fold the top edge over. And finger press it with my nail. I like to use long skinny pieces too. So I like to use squares, squarish, but I also like to do this. It gives you a really interesting look on your piece. So I'm going to fold this one over and I'm going to put these two together, right sides together. And sometimes when they're long and skinny like this, I will stick a pin on the end so the whole thing doesn't move while I'm stitching. And you see this is a little short, that's not a big deal. So I would start stitching here where this fabric starts. So let's use an ecru, I think is what you call this, thread this time. I have a knot on the end. I'm going to go in underneath the seam allowance just to get started. And this time I'm going to do a running stitch, but I'm going to do it through both layers. It's going to give, I should have done it in black you'd be able to see it better. It's going to give it an ever so slightly different appearance when you flip it over. And I'm as close to the edge as I can be. And now when you open this one, it doesn't give you the railroad tracks, but you can still see the stitches and they're kind of like, some of them go this way and some of them go that way. And it's just interesting. And I like to like pull them apart so you can actually see them. This next stitch is the opposite of the one we just did. So I'm folding over the seam allowances on both my pieces but I'm putting the wrong sides together. I'm going to stick a little pin in the end just to keep them from slipping because it's a long skinny one again. And I'm going to flip open the top layer and put my needle right, not in the seam, not in the um, fold, but just right beneath the fold. Because I'm going to now do a running stitch and it does help 
if you have a thinner needle for this because the fabric is four layers thick. I'm just going to do this all the way across. And when you get to the end, you can just finish it off with a little um, back stitch or a knot, whichever you prefer. And remember, if you keep it within a quarter of an inch of the edge, that's going to be in your seam allowance. And so you're not going to see that. Keep your stitches as close to the fold as you can when you're stitching. So this, this line of stitching creates a little ridge on your piece. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but I really like the way that looks. The next one kills two birds with one stone. So you have to use a little bit of a wider piece, meaning uh, a bigger piece. So you can't use teeny tiny little scraps because your seam allowance is going to be a little bit wider. So you're going to lay one piece over another and you're going to choose the piece that you prefer to see the edge on. And I always like this little ratty edge. So this one's going on top and this one is going on the bottom. And I overlap it about a half inch to three quarters of an inch this time because I'm going to be doing embellishing on it. So I'm embellishing it and putting it together at the same time. And you really don't need to see me do that. But I will tell you that when I get started, I put the knot within that quarter inch seam allowance along the edge. And then I just do my running stitch all the way across. You can do as many rows as you want, or you could not even do running stitch. You could do um, little crisscrosses, little X. As simple as these techniques are, they all do give you a slightly different appearance on the top of your cloth. The next thing that we're going to do is invisible baste all these seams down and that's why I have to my right the single thread. So I'm using a th single embroidery floss for this whereas I used a double embroidery floss for the other one when I was stitching the seams. So here's a good one. Let's do this one. So I have a knot in the end of my single thread if you've never done invisible basting before. That's what this is called, invisible basting. You come up on the right side and you go down. You can either go right behind that stitch or right next to it or right in front of it, but you want to make sure you're not going back down in the same hole. So you're going maybe two or three threads over and pull and it's creating a little dimple. I do try to keep these even. I just like the way that looks. So down and then back when you come back up you're about a quarter of an inch away from where you went down. It's going to create these cute little dimples. You can do this in matching thread or you can do it in decorative thread. You could do it in black or whatever. The opposite of whatever your patch is. And when you get to the end, I just go back down, jump across. This one's a little loose, so I'm giving it another little stitch. And then go back down and back out to the top again and do your little dimples. Do your little dimples on both sides. I do this to all the patches. So you're going to open up all your seams, even the ones that want to lay flat. I want to see the dimples, so I'm going to do it to all my patches. 
can see here the dimples. I love them. What we're after here is we're trying to make our fabric patches more interesting. I'm inserting this little segment after I already edited the video because I had an idea and I didn't want to leave this out. So I just stitched these two pieces together and remember I just finished telling you to uh, glue baste or invisible baste along the seams to hold the seam down. So I thought what if instead of glue basting it you came up from the back and did a little quilting running stitch along the edge to hold the seam down. And that was my idea for today. Now that you've got all your little patches, now you're going to try to piece them together like a puzzle. And you're just going to take your time and find pieces that go together size-wise and like that, those go together. So I would sew those two together and then I would sew that one together. And you've got a little patch, right? Now, once you get a lot of these pieces, and you're sewing on like another strip, do take a moment and pin them together to make sure that you're happy with A, the way they look, and B, the way they fit. And then you can either do a whip stitch, you can do any one of the techniques here. You don't have to, um, you can just do a running stitch. You don't have to always do a whip stitch. I just like the way the whip stitch looks. So that's that. So now that you've got all your little pieces, put together into bigger patches. Now the goal, there's the bigger patches, the goal is to have two patches that are at least a certain size. Now I am going to make, I told you we're going to make a little needle book. My needle book is going to be really tiny because in a video it's easier to make something small to show you. So mine's going to be three inches by three inches, but you can make yours five by five, five by eight, whatever size you want, it's going to be the same technique. So make sure your patches are an inch bigger all the way around. Just, I'm going to show you on a piece of cardboard. Make sure that they're at least an inch bigger all the way around the size that you want. Now, once you've got your patches, I jumped ahead of myself. Once you have your patches created, now you're going to embellish them. And that is another fun part. I think all the parts are fun. So that's where all those little bits and pieces that I got from taking my clothing apart are going to come in handy. So you can go through that. And if you don't have any of these, that's fine. Just find something. And if you have nothing, absolutely nothing, then you can do stitching. So you're just going to lay them down and experiment with how they look. You can sew buttons on there. You can do whatever you want, but make sure that you stay. Well, that's not quite an inch. So let's make sure that you stay away from the outside edge. So if you want your book, let's just say, if you want your book to be five by eight, cut out a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard and lay it down and make sure that your embellishment stays there and that you have this extra, at least an inch, around the edge that's nice and flat. So if you have absolutely no nothing to embellish with, then just cut out some more scraps or rip some more scraps. 
lay them down like I did here and just do some running stitches or some X's or some other kind of embroidery stitch, whatever you want to do. And then that's like a piece of a, I don't know, that looks like a, it's not a belt loop. I'm not sure what that is. But if you have some of those extra pieces, then just stitch them down. And that's it for this week. So I love this. So come back next week and we will make the needle book. If you like to slow stitch, I know you're going to enjoy doing this. So I will see you again next week. And if you have any questions, please ask me in the comments below. I hope I covered everything. And I will see you. Big kisses next week.